Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today a little bit a different video because I have an issue. Well, specifically my camera has an issue. My camera has lost its cool. It's getting too hot. Um, there might be two possible reasons for this. One is that the fan isn't running or the uh, heating element is not able to dissipate the heat or the sensor is not able to read the temperature which leads the electronics not to control the temperature. Um, I just don't know. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to connect this camera to my laptop and then see what the actual readings are. Usually this camera is attached to my telescope and uh, my telescope is controlled by the ASI Air and it did indeed report as well that this sensor temperature is uh, way too high and it doesn't drop to the minus 10 centigrade that I usually set this camera to cool to. So yeah, let's, let's get this uh, connected and see what uh, ASI Cap, the software that I use on the laptop, is reporting me as the sensor temperature. So we will uh, need to have an external power supply, so I use the ZWO provided power supply. So now the uh, light is on and I obviously need to let the computer talk to the camera and for this I use the uh, provided ZWO USB 3 cable. And I immediately already hear that the fan is on. So the fan is not the issue. Let's start up the software. ASI Studio. ASI Cap. And it detects the camera already. So let's connect to it and it should stop the fan immediately. And that indeed is working. So when I click this uh, icon here, I can go, let's enlarge this view, but will make it easier to see. I can go into the temperature view and there I already see that the computer is getting a reading of 94 degrees, which is very hot. And if I turn on the cooler, it is now set to cool the sensor until 15 plus centigrade but even now the because the, the sensor is already 94 degrees the cooler will jump up to 100 percent gradually and then uh, it will not be able to cool the camera which is the issue it goes all the way to the top oddly enough the temperature rises as well but just by two degrees or something and it doesn't make sense at all. And the camera actually feels hot to the touch. So let's turn everything off again and let's try to get to the bottom of this. So there are a few possible causes to this. One is that the sensor is not getting the correct reading. So what we can do is we can simply uh, unscrew the back end, disconnect the fan, and then we can see the uh, connector that connects the cooler to the electronics. At least that's how it was explained to me. So let's undo these three screws and let's make sure that the washers that are on top of there are staying attached because there is a side, a correct up side to them. So now the back end is loose and I can lift this up and you will see it is connected by a connector to the electronics. So the fan can be disconnected like this and there we have it. And then this central housing can also be lifted off. It's just a simple ring. Watch out, it has sharp edges. So this is the actual housing of the camera. So there is this main board here with the connectors on it, the connector to the uh, 
fan and we saw that the fan was working and the software was able to read the speed of the fan. It's about this connector on this board. This is the connector that apparently is responsible for measuring the temperature. There was a document that advised me to disconnect it and then uh, pinch the two pins inside the connector a little bit towards each other and then reseat this connector. So what I did was I uh, took a little screwdriver and I gently pressed on the side of the pin and then I did the same on the other side making those two pins move a little bit closer to each other and then I just reconnected the connector here. So that's it. Then we can uh, uh, reassemble the camera. So it's basically the other way around. So we need to put this in place. This is not correct. So we need to switch it around. Make sure there are no cables pinched between the metals. Don't forget to connect this back again, otherwise the fan will not work. And then cooling is broken anyway. It should slot into place, and it does. And then we can reassemble the camera by putting in the screws. It actually is easy. Next step, let's check whether or not this worked. I did this before, it didn't work. It would be very surprising if it suddenly works. So here we go again, connect the camera, fan goes on, we press the little play button in the software, the fan goes off, we go to the temperature section, and it's still 96 degrees. We turn on the cooler, the cooler starts, we see that the speed is building up, all that is fine, well not fine, but you know what I mean. It is working as it was before we disassembled the camera. So what can we do next? We can also go into the front side of the camera because there is the connector of the uh, sensor board, the sensor electronics, with a ribbon cable that goes to the back side. So let's disconnect everything again. And let's turn the camera around. In the box there should be this little Allen key and uh, with this you can open up the front side of the camera. We warned though, this is a sealed compartment. Which means that once you have opened this, there are these little tablets in there that you need to put in the uh, microwave to regenerate them. And these tablets are used to remove all the moisture from that chamber. If you do not do this and you put your camera outside, you run into the risk that the uh, front window of the camera will get fogged up by some, uh, some of the moisture that will condensate uh, onto that window. So you do not want any moisture in this chamber. I'll open it up anyway because I just wanted to show it in the video. This time there are no washers. There are four screws around the circumference of the camera. And then this top side will come off. And there we have the tablets that I was just mentioning. So these need to be lifted out. Then you can put them on a plate or something, put them in the refrigerator, no, <laughs> in the microwave, and then you can uh, regenerate them. Uh, also make sure that uh, once you've reassembled it, to do that quickly, um, and mind these tablets are hot when you put them into the uh, refrigerator, <laughs> in the microwave. So this is the sensor of the camera. And you can see that ribbon cable. You can uh, open the uh, connector by uh, pulling on the uh, little black uh, thing here. That is a plastic 
um, you need to um, put that in the open position and then you should theoretically be able to lift out the uh, cable. I say theoretically because I didn't do this. Why didn't I do this? Because it is recessed inside the camera and I have no idea how to get to that part actually. Uh, I don't want to open up these screws as I would change the tilt of the camera as well. But um, yeah, we all know this camera is not working. It might be due to this cable that information is not getting through. But I don't think this is the case because the camera cooler was at 100% for a long time. But if I look at the images, even though the temperature sensor might be incorrectly stating that it is 100 degrees almost, it was full of noise. More noise than I know that is usually on the images. Which leads me to think that it is not the sensor measuring it wrong. It is measuring a correct temperature of 100 degrees. Remember, I also felt that the camera was heating up. So what I think what is happening is that the cooler is not in correct contact anymore with the sensor. Behind here, there would be a cooling paste or something if this is the same kind of setup as in a computer, in a CPU, and uh, it would make the heat transfer from the sensor to the cooling mechanism possible. And I think something is wrong there. I'm not going to mess with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the box, going to send it back to my supplier, and they will send it to CWO for repairs. And uh, hopefully I will get this camera back soon because I'm now proudly making some videos where I call myself the Lord of the Rigs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, obviously having only one camera makes me Lord of one rig. I'm going to reassemble it and send it to, uh, to my shop and then uh, hopefully I will get it back soon. Let's uh, reassemble it. To close up that connector again. Not going to mess with the uh, with the tablets. I will let CWO handle that. So, ASI 294MC Pro. I really like this camera. It has a nice pixel size to use on my Edge HD 8 inch, but um, I also have some dislikes with this camera, especially when I use it together with the L Extreme filter. This uh, camera sensor has a weird thing in the deep red. It has a pattern that is visible in the images. You can calibrate them away using flats, but uh, I would rather not have these weird patterns turn up in my images because uh, yeah, sometimes calibration is a hard thing. Not sure what I'm going to do with this camera once I get it back uh, after the repair. I might go and, and buy a different camera. And one of the cameras that is perhaps a good alternative is the ASI 533MC Pro. According to the astronomy.tools website, the calculator there, it also is a camera that would fit yeah, nicely with my Edge HD. The only downside there is that uh, supposed to the rectangular sensor on the 294MC, it would be a square sensor. Let's uh, stop this video. The camera will go in its pouch. I'll put it in the box, put the address of my shop on it and send it on its way and hopefully get it repaired quickly and correctly. So, thanks for watching, see you next time.
sensor temperature is hello